Well, hi and welcome to my production studio. Today's subject is camcords versus the rest, so DSLRs, mirrorless, cinema cameras and all the others. I have made a video on this subject quite some years ago now, but my opinion on the subject has changed a lot. So I thought it was necessary to be able to revisit this because, yeah, my opinion has changed dramatically. So the reason why I choose camcords over the years for filming wildlife is everything's built in. They're just so versatile. ND filters, uh, infrared so that I can film live in my nesting boxes. Being able to zoom in and in and out with the touch of a finger you can't beat that because with wildlife things happen like that so you only have seconds to capture these things so you need something that has all the tools ready at your fingertips so that you can be quick and efficient to be able to capture these sort of things that happen instantly in front of you now with the image quality they were the better deal because with DSLRs they just didn't cut it at the time that I started with camcords so with the XF 300 only has 1080p but this camera when I first bought it there was no 4k this was the best for me to be able to film wildlife so it doesn't have very good dynamic range but it has a solid image. And I'll say that for all camcords, they all have, even right up until this day, solid images. So that means that there's a, enough detail in the image. You can slightly go into a little bit of low light, not much, but a little bit. So I had a they have and still have a lot going for them but the image quality I would put it at 5 out of 10 so it's right in the middle not that high detail but not a terrible detail neither but things have changed I had to think hard about where I wanted to go with filming wildlife because I want to make a wildlife documentary, so I wanted a little bit better image quality, so a lot more detail on what I was filming. And also, the last four years, at least once a year, I've been getting emails from people asking me to be able to contract out, or license out, I should say, some of my footage of antikindness. So, uh, this is something that I would like to build on. So I thought, I need to up the game. I need much higher end detail image and also a camera that can go into really low light. So on a really heavily overcast day, I can keep filming. doesn't matter whether the sun's starting to go down. I still should be able to keep filming and have a noise-free image. The technology is, has been coming along in leaps and bounds with the mirrorless cameras. So for DSLRs in the past, like this beast here, <laughs> they never had the image quality. For me, it was plasticky looking. So especially in the blacks, it had this little bit of a plasticky look about it. That changed with, with Canon and Sony couple of years ago so the R5.6 that I bought I could see this amazing detail bad dynamic range though but having the ability to go into really low light just amazing and when the Canon R5C came out I started to really take note of that camera because a brilliant dynamic range it had just as good or maybe even better image quality as far as a sharp clean image than the R6 
and having that ability to go into really low light, having two native ISOs to take you even further into you know, getting into darkness, it's just something I couldn't really ignore. I am denied about which one of those cameras to go for. Do I stick with the camcords and go for the XF605 that I hoped would give me a little bit better image quality, so it's a lot sharper, cleaner image, and be able to go a little bit further into that sort of duller light? Or do I break away from the camcords and go for the R5C, go for a cinema camera that's got a lot going for it as far as image quality? I end up choosing the XF605 because I wanted to keep going with that camcord and flexibility about it. Not having to worry about putting add-ons like you, do, you have to do with mirrorless cameras to be able to film properly. I thought, yeah, okay, decision made. Well, I bought that camera, the XF605, and I was bitterly disappointed with it. Now, I was getting noise in every type of lighting condition. Beautiful sunlight coming onto me early morning, straight onto me. Noise in the background, noise on my shirt or my jumper. Now, I went onto a Facebook page and asked whether anyone else was having this problem. Uh, got a little bit of flack. <laughs> People, I don't think, really believed that there was any problem with these cameras. Now, I don't know whether there's a big batch had come out that weren't calibrated properly or whether there was an actual issue with them. Uh, I got uh, people on my YouTube channel commenting on a video that I put out that you know about that camera. I did a review and on how bitterly disappointed I was with it. They talked about that they had a, the same problems and they agree with me totally. But on the Facebook page, there was nothing but don't know what you're talking about. We don't have any issues. So I don't know really what the problem is. I have some theories, but we're not going to go into any more about that. Two of the people that contacted me saying they had the same problem had actually gone to Canon and set their cameras in only to get them back to say that they couldn't find an issue with noise. So that just sort of made my mind up that, no, I can't have this camera. I need to be able to get that high quality. I can get it from the R5C, so I'm not waiting around for Canon to fix this camera. It's gone. I am selling it, and hopefully I can get a second-hand R5C at the same price that I sell my XF605 for. So I only had it for about two months. Off it went, and I replaced it very quickly. And I'm being filmed with the R5C right now. Now, I have been extremely happy with that camera because it's giving me that image quality that I so desired to be able to give my customers, because I've set up a website to be able to license out my footage. So I've got that all set up. I am now upping that game because the R5C is giving me what I wanted. No, it does not have the flexibility of a camcord. And I'm missing that terribly. I've had to buy extra stuff, which I knew I would, say so monitor, external battery. Takes me about five, six minutes to set the camera, which is not ideal, but that's just the way things are. I've totally accepted that I have to have all these extra things go on, and I'm not going to be able to film straight away. But once I have everything set up, everything is attached onto the tripod, I can move around without any hassles. I've made it so that I can be very flexible. I kept the XF400 so that I can film inside my nesting boxes in infrared. And if I need a B-roll camera for some reason into the future, I've got it here. I'll be able to match him up reasonably well. So my opinion has changed a lot with camcords versus mirrorless cameras and cinema cameras. The image quality just isn't there. It hasn't kept up. So with the XF605, if Canon put the R5C's sensor in there and its chipset, that would be the ultimate camera. 
the one we've been looking for, the one that I've been looking for all my life, one that just about does it all. It would be an amazing camera and I would sell everything and buy it in the flash. But I don't see Canon ever doing that. They've come up a bit with a one inch sensor and they probably ain't gonna change that. When it comes to making that final choice on which camera to buy, it comes down to what matters to you the most. If a camcord appeals to you because it's just so flexible, you can get going quicker because you're not having to worry about attaching things to it, everything's built in. The image quality, you want something that's reasonable, but it doesn't have to be really high detail and it doesn't have to go into really low light, then definitely a camcord will be the thing to buy. But if it's all about the image quality, being really high detail and being able to work in very low light, then a mirrorless camera or a cinema camera is definitely the way to go for you. This is how I've had to make my choices. For me, I had to go down that road of a cinema camera. The R5C just has that sharper image than the uh, C70. So in the end, that was my choice. I knew that I had to buy all the extra stuff to go on it and it wasn't going to be as quick to set up. So that is how I made my choice and that is how you're going to make your choice on which camera to buy. I know when you go to buy a camcord, which one, <laughs> you'll have to make that decision yourself. Do some research on each individual camera and see which one will work the best for you. And it's the same with mirrorless and a cinema camera. Go and have a look at all the different reviews on them. Home in on the one that suits you the best, money-wise and um, feature-wise. That's all I've got for you for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing stuff, click on my pretty little face just down in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Hit the little bell, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you want to go and have a look at all the other mad and crazy things I've been doing in the past, click on my icon right here at the end of this video, take it to my channel. I talk about photographing and filming in a forest and open forest environment. Uh, when I go on adventures, I always take you with me. And when I buy cameras and camera equipment, I do reviews on them and give you my honest opinion on them. So go and have a browse, there'll be something there of interest to you, I am sure. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.